admitted more than one million immigrants because of the Syrian war, the German people went up in arms. Because no right-thinking person, all right, no right-thinking person will think it is right for that many foreigners to come into their country in a short span of time. And of course, the authorities and those pro-immigration, pro-open borders, all right, say, oh, you're racist and you're xenophobic. No, it is not a matter of racism and xenophobia. Because this is the talk from the global elites, the people who stand to gain the most, to profit the most from open borders and immigration, from labor arbitrage. They take labor from a cheap country, they import it into their own country, or it can be foreigners importing the labor into another country. They profit by it, but the people who suffer are the locals. Yeah? The people who suffer are the ones like that taxi driver who spoke Queen's English. And you tell me that it is his lot as a Singaporean to be driving a taxi at this stage of his life. And you say that this is good for Singapore. So, my friends, our TFR is disastrous. All right? It is exacerbated all the time with ridiculous policies. And one of the ridiculous policies now, which people are seeing through, is HDB. 60% of Singaporeans think that property is unaffordable now. Now, I don't need to go and listen to a sin and or whatever, all right? Come up with fancy arguments and all that. And I think the opposition is also taking the wrong tack. They are making the arguments so complicated. It is a result of flawed PAP policies of the last 30 years. Building land costs into HDB. All right? And now, of course, they can't get out. And that's why Sim An has to go and say, oh, you know, if you, if you lower HDB prices drastically, many Singaporeans will be hurt. Yes, it is because of your flawed policies. All right? And now, on the resale market, I think it was in October, it could have been October or November, there were 45 transactions over a million dollars. And they say, oh, but BTO is different, it's affordable. Yeah, it is affordable, really? When people have to pay over 25, 30 years? And you know something? When a couple has to wait five to six years for a BTO, what happens? They move together, they move in together as a family unit later in life, don't they? That means they will have children later in life, right? No one is as brave as a Han Hui Hui, who has told you that before 30, she wants to have four children. Because a lot of Singaporeans will be doing their sums and thinking, look here, I can't afford this. It's not only housing. It's not only the rising inflation on food and fuel. What about childcare? What about other costs? You know, if we are such a rich nation, I say this, our most important task, and I have said this many times before, is to raise our TFR to well above two. We are a long way away from that. But it can be done. It doesn't mean that every advanced country has to have such a poor TFR. I give you a good example. A great example is Australia, where there has been a baby boom in recent years. Why? Because they have very good government policies that encourage family building. On the other hand, the PAP, Indrani Raja, comes out once in a while and tells you, oh, we've got all these policies to help Singapore families have more children. Year after year, decade after decade, the TFR keeps going down. And you, it's not rocket science, right? 
straight away you can tell it is because of a failure of government policies. All right? That's what I have to say about TFR, we agree. But, my friends, I hope you don't forget the number behind and please contribute generously to Hui Hui's legal fund. Okay? And we we four children. How do you manage to get three babies in four years? <laughs> Share your <laughs> secret with Singaporeans so that the government can learn from you and try to lift the, uh, you know, uh, TFR. I think the main thing no, first of all, I think one thing very important from his speech that I want to add is that the median age of first-time mother in Singapore is actually 31 years old. So when I go out, I'll be younger than half the mothers out there every time I bring my children out. And that is for first-time mothers. So first-time mother is 31. So those family whereby they have more than one kid, right? That, fa that parents is like, some of them almost 40. Then they are also, in the news we see celebrity giving birth at 50 years old. So that is actually a very sad thing because when you are older, your sperm quality drop. Then when your sperm quality drop, that's when you have children with issues. Which also explains why nowadays, I think it was also public in the news, they say that Singapore happened to have a lot of kids with a lot of different kinds of allergies. And this kind of things happen is because the parents are old. So when the parents are old, the children that they produce are of a lower quality. Yeah. And Lee Kuan Yew is like, you know, he believes in eugenics, so yeah, that explains a lot of the situation. On, and the government is, is the one who say that, oh, you know Singaporeans are the one who don't have initiative, their brain cannot think better than foreigners, that's why foreigners can be there to steal your lunches. So the reason why people have the ability to take away things from Singaporeans is because Singaporeans let them take away it in the first place. If the government tells you to stop at 2, you say, no, I'm not going to stop at 2. If I stop at 2, then you are going to ask the foreigners to come in. Then, th then the thing is, Singaporeans keep re reproducing and foreigners won't come in in the first place. And if foreigners are here to come in, we are not saying that, okay, foreigners cannot come in. And the, in fact, the foreigners come in, they have to be separated from their families in their own country as well. And even those who come in successfully, how come there are so many PRs and so many people holding work passes? It's because maybe they have one family who is in the family tree, there is only one person who is a doctor. And that person happened to become a Singaporean. But the spouse of, the, of this person, the children of this person, the parents that they try to bring over, they only can become PRs, they only can hold work passes, which explains why there is such a large number of people uh, holding all these passes. And how do I know? Because I bring my children to, to see doctors, and, I, and the doctors always tell me, Oh, you know y'all are very lucky, you're a whole family Singaporeans, right? So y'all get the subsidized rate. My family, right, we also pregnant, eh, but then we have to pay PR rate. Then I was like, I thought you are Singaporean, eh? Yeah, but my spouse cannot become a uh, Singaporean. So there are a lot of these kind of families you need in Singapore, whereby one person is a Singaporean. Which, if you look at the BTO now, because at my housing estate, we live in BTO. And in BTO, we realize that how come there are so many foreigners here? Yeah, because they speak to us in not Singlish, not English, yeah, that's how we know. Then we start to realise, you only need one Singaporean to get a BTO. Compared to last time, I think last time there was like, you need both to be Singaporean to get a BTO. Then now you only need one. So we realise there are a lot of people whereby the whole family, there's only one Singaporean. And from that one Singaporean, they get the whole family here. Yeah, and these people also have to suffer under the government policies. 